Okay, my crystal designing artist friends, how about we actually paint a crystal in this crystal painting class? Let's do it. So I have taken my original drawing sheet and cut all my crystals out. And I thought we'd go with this one first because it's pretty basic. Um, and I like that we have just this one side dark, the middle is the lightest, and then over here is gonna be like that mid-tone. And I've already been playing around some, and I wanted to show you some of the variations that you can get just from even one crystal or one drawing of a crystal, just by making, like here I made that much longer and this much shorter, this is um, thinner. So you can really get a lot of variation just from one crystal and also from the colors. So let's talk about the colors that I'm gonna use. And I thought for this first one, we'd keep it nice and simple and stay in this little neighborhood here. So I'm kind of gonna lead with purple. Um, I've got some blue here um, and some red. And I'm also gonna be using brown and black to dull some of my colors down for some of those muted tones. So to draw the crystal, like I said before, you can really, um, like you don't have to get this drawing perfect in any way, shape or form, just kind of have fun with it. You certainly don't have to worry about getting perfectly straight lines either. Um, I sure don't, I don't, like right there, that's so crooked, I'm gonna have to fix it. Like it's too crooked. <laughs> That's what erasers are for. So leave your ruler in your desk and just do the best you can. It will be perfect. I'm making mine a little bigger because um, I think it'll be easier for you guys to see. So you definitely don't have to make yours as big. It is a little easier though, so you don't want to go too small. And I'm going to fix my one very crooked little line here. And now it is perfecto. Sometimes what I like to do is if I've gone like kind of dark on these lines, I'll lightly brush over with my eraser so I can still see them, but they're not so pronounced. Okay, so we have our drawing um, and I told you about the colors. This is that classics palette again. I don't can't remember if I said that or not, but I've got blue, purple, brown, black, and this mixture of red and pink. I'm gonna go ahead and use um, a number two brush for pretty much the entire painting, um, but totally use whatever brush you are comfortable with. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and I'm gonna just gonna work from this side to this side. Well, sort of. I'll explain it as I go, how about that? <laughs> I'm grabbing a little purple. Now this already has a little brown in it, so it's already slightly muted. And so you can see how soupy this is too. So it's pretty watery. And the thing is, is that you wanna go pretty light to begin with, because remember that you can always darken it up if you need to. And what I'm trying to do right now is fill in the shape with a little color and some wetness. And on this first shape, you can see I'm going right up to my pencil lines. Okay, so now that I've got it filled in, so it's, it's slightly wet and it's got color within it, and now I can start to play a little bit. So I know that I want this bottom part to be a little darker, and up here, I'm going to add in a little of this pinkish reddish tone, 
for some character and just for fun and just because I think it looks pretty. So these are some of the creative choices that you'll make along the way. Um, you might want to add blue into yours. Just remember at this point that you want to keep everything slightly uh, light. You don't want to go too dark too quick. And so remember that you always have your Q-tip. You can always use a paper towel if you need to take some moisture out and some color out. While this is wet, I'm gonna grab a little brown and a little purple, maybe a little more purple, because I know down here I want some intensity. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop some darkness right down in there while this is still wet and start to give this facet a little character. So while that one's doing its thing, I'm gonna come right up here. I'm laying in a little color. I'm gonna dip my brush, dab it off a little bit and pull that into this shape. Now this one, I'm going up against the pencil lines everywhere but right here. So I'm gonna leave that white space in between those two facets. And I'm gonna add a little of my pink color right to that corner. All right, so now what I'm gonna do actually is skip to this side. So when I paint a crystal, I paint around the lightest shape. So over here, I actually started here. I went here, here, then this one, and then this one. So I didn't paint this lightest shape until the very last. So with each of these, I'm going right up to that pencil line, but then this shape will be slightly smaller because I'm gonna leave a white space. So now I'm gonna go over here and this is gonna be my dark side. So I'm grabbing some of that brown. I'm gonna mute this down a bit. Laying in some color. Grabbing some water. Right up to my pencil lines. I'm gonna add, ooh, that's a lot of black. I'm gonna add a little black <laughs> into this mixture and plop some right in the bottom here. Remember, these are just like creative choices that you get to make. Like, where do you want your dark, dark to be? And where do you want your light, light to be? This has dried a little bit over here, so I'm going to take some of this dark tone and put it right in this little, little corner piece right there, because I know I want that to be pretty dark. So that, whoop, that had not dried quite as much as I thought. And there is a lizard in my studio. <laughs> oh, you can't make this stuff up. Um, so that was distracting. All right, so. <laughs> oh my gosh, I gotta stop the video. Okay guys, I'm back and the lizard is gone and everything's good. So <laughs> this is hysterical because the truth is, is that I have filmed this first video for the crystal portrait section of this like seriously 10 times. And all these crazy things keep happening. And like, I don't know, like I can't paint. <laughs> it's just not happening. But this is just the reality. Like, this is what happens when you paint sometimes, right? Just things go awry. Like, you feel like every artistic ability that you ever had has now simply left your body. It, it happens. I am with you on that one. I feel it sometimes, too. But good thing this is looking really cool. So I don't know if you noticed, but 
right as the lizard was about to attack, um, <laughs> I had extra water in my brush that I didn't realize and it plopped in here. Um, and you can see what it's doing now. And that's the beauty of painting these is that all those weird little things that happen, they really just add to the character of the crystal and it will end up looking really, really cool. So we don't have to worry about so-called mistakes. What is it that Bob Ross always said? They're happy accidents and they truly are with crystals. So I'm gonna keep going. I'm going up here now and this is part of my darker side. So I'm grabbing a little paint, going right up to that pencil line, leaving a space there. And I don't, I can't remember now if I mentioned it, but if you, like if you accidentally mess this white part up, it's really not a big deal because sometimes um, especially if you have a wet side here and a wet side here and they accidentally touch and they start to bloom into each other, it actually creates a lot of beauty. And after it dries, we can take a white gel pen and fix all that. So really not a big deal. So don't worry about those spaces in between too much. So now I'm gonna go into this middle section here and I'm grabbing a bit more, I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit. I'm grabbing a little more of that vibrant purple into my mixture. I want this to be a little brighter. And going light for sure. So down here, once I get that all filled in, I'm actually going to take my Q-tip and I'm going to rub a little bit of this out. It's already started to dry. So, because I want to add a bit of this pink color up here. So I'm going to wet this a little bit more. There we go. That's the tone I want it to be. Pull some of this out and then go back in with a little pink right up here. So a lot of this is like play, you know, you just, you're making these creative decisions in the moment. There's no one way to do these things. I'm gonna take a little darkness and go right down here I want this to be a little more on the brown side. Once again, I had way too much water in my brush. I'm telling you, the struggle is real today, y'all. But we're going to do this thing. <laughs> okay, so now that I have those parts like I want them to be, almost, there we go. Now I'm going to go into my lightest area here. And for this, um, I'm going to start with this pink tone. And you can see how watered down this is. I'm going to start filling this in, leaving that space. And once I get some of that pink in there, I'm going to grab a little purple too. And I like to do these pretty watery because what I do is I fill it in with color and water and then I take it, start to take it back out. Grab a little purple. Okay, so I've got that all filled in and now I'm gonna grab my Q-tip and start taking some out. This is definitely my lightest area here. 
So I've left a little darker over here and maybe I'll even add a little darker right to this top edge. But that's looking good to me. So now at this point, what I'm going to do is let everything dry and we'll come back and reassess and see how we want to do slight adjustments to really make this pop.